Emma Ballard and the Crystal Book, Chapter 7, Early Present In the wee hours of the morning, Adele awoke next to Emma and slipped out of bed. Fry and Flo were having breakfast and revealed that they had a surprise for Emma. Adele filled her cup with fresh coffee. An early birthday present. Well, that's sweet. Today we will have to start preparations for the party. Yes, we have a lot to do to get ready, agreed Flo. Well, I am off to work with the fairies, Fry grinned. Flo grabbed the egg basket. Adele, you relax. I will gather eggs this morning. Wish I could rattle off those hens' names like Emma does. Dolphina, Penelope, Fiona, something, Cheetah Face, um, oh, forget it. And oh, the spider? I have to remember she is there protecting the entrance. Paulina or something like that? Emma awakened, realizing she had to sit and wait for someone to come and get her. She fought the urge to be angry about it and picked up her journal. Writing always helped to focus on what she really wanted to think about instead of being angry. Another day in bed, in a room that isn't mine. Another day that I feel nothing in my legs. I can't feel my legs. I wish I was a fairy. I wish I was a bird. Then I could use my wings to fly around or even just fly away. I wish I had a wheelchair. I would not stay in bed. I want to go outside. Oh, and I hope Daddy gets back soon. I don't want him missing my birthday party. And, oh, I sure am using a lot of eyes. A tap at her door interrupted the flow of her pen. Oh, Mama, I just have to sit here. I can't get myself up. <laughs> I am in a terrible mess. Do you think I am rude and sour-faced? Adele laughed and assured her that she could never be like that, for she understood the simple rule. Remember, we must always be... Emma finished the sentence with a squished-up face. Yes, I know. Nice. Adele smiled. Yes. And now, let's get you to breakfast. I didn't mean to leave you all alone. I'm missing the last week of school, Mama. I have already spoken to the headmistress. She says it was no problem at all. You have good grades, so you will be fine. The most important thing is that you get well. The invitations we sent out for your party have all confirmed they are coming. Emma reached up and felt her mother's soft, smooth hair. That's good. Your hair looks beautiful. I hate mine. Emma gave Emma's short, tangled locks a tussle. I like your hair. It's free and wild and matches you. She tickled Emma's sides. Do you smell breakfast? Emma squirmed and inhaled slowly. Oh, I smell cinnamon rolls. My favorite. Flo peeked in. Do you want to eat in, eat in here or in the kitchen? In the kitchen. I'm tired of this bed. I hate it in here. Emma whined, slamming her hands on the covers. Emma, be nice. Have you ever heard of the happy game, Flo asked. Well, I don't feel happy. Why should I? Emma snipped. Don't you be so snippy. What is the happy game, Flo? Adele asked in a kind tone. Flo shrugged. Well... You have to find something to be happy about. And I have something to be happy about this morning. Would you like to hear it? Emma nodded as Adele picked her up out of bed. Bean laid a green egg this morning. Emma clapped. Yay, I'm happy about that too. Yes, we just played the happy game, Flo said. Now let's eat before those luscious warm cinnamon rolls get cold. They spent the morning planning the party, playing the piano in the music room, and sitting on the veranda sipping lemonade. They spent the lazy afternoon going over recipes for drinks and snacks and cakes and choosing the china pattern for the party. Flo and Fry worked on Emma's secret surprise present. Grandpa, Gabe, and Gabby stayed busy with the injured rescues at the Ballard Animal Rescue Center. It was a good thing Gabe had stayed home to help. Late spring into summer, so many baby birds require rescue after tree trimming, knock down nests. Most of all, 
the animals that are fallen from the nest, their nests, or rescued, come from the neighboring towns and villages. The villagers of Ballard Island, the villagers of Ballardsville, excuse me, the villagers of Ballardsville took great pride in being eco-friendly and never trim trees in the spring or early summer when babies of all kinds are born. And since the horrendous hurricane of long ago and the mysterious arrival of Ballard Island, the town had planted hundreds of trees and many, many gardens. They spent the evening enjoying the fresh air on the veranda and soon bedtime arrived. And once again, Adele and Emma fell asleep in each other's arms reading. Morning came peacefully and thankful for a night free of the black hole portal dream, Adele slipped out of the room. Flo snuck in quietly and left Emma a tray of sliced apples neatly arranged in a pinwheel with sugar cubes stacked in the middle, and Merlin screeched and perched on the window sill. Emma stirred. Merlin, thank you for letting me sleep in. Merlin turned around, facing away from her, and Emma picked up a familiar sound. She scooted closer to the window, delighted at the sight of Gabe, riding up the path on Scout, leading Primbo. Primbo! she squealed, holding her, her arms as far as she could. Gabe rode right up to the window and let the two ponies stick their heads in to nuzzle her. She snuggled Primbo's face. You're all better! Gabe slid down Scout's neck onto the bed. He grabbed the treats, handing a few to Emma. Flo knew I was coming. Soft pony lips nibbled on the palms of their hands. Why aren't you in school, Gabe? Oh, Mom and Grandpa need me. We had so many little animals come in. Plus, I need you to be here. Plus, I need to be here with you. I fed a whole nest of baby robins, a baby woodpecker, baby blue jays, baby cardinals, hummingbirds, and some possums, some baby possums. You're going to miss the end of the year party. Ah, the big, big planetarium event. I don't care about those. There will be more next year. The animals are more important, and, well, you are too, Gabe said, squishing a sliced apple between his teeth. Adele arrived with buckwheat hotcakes, scrambled eggs, and freshly made strawberry syrup still warm. Good morning. Breakfast has been served. And she set the tray on the bed out of the pony's reach and couldn't help but smile at the scene. I'll be back to dress you, Emma. Now please eat. Emma smothered her hotcakes and syrup and looked at Primbo. Primbo, I wish you could tell me how you feel. I am so sorry we fell. Gabe, sometimes I wish I could really talk to animals, understand them. He seems happy. Gabe nodded his mouth full and covered his mouth. No one can do that, but it would be nice, especially at the rescue center. Emma stared at her pony. There are stories of people understanding animals talk. I have read them. Well, those are just stories, Emma. They aren't true in life. A belly laugh came from the door, and Fry shook his head at the sight of the two ponies with their heads poked through the window. Your early present is ready. I will take you to it when you are dressed. Gabe jumped up. I gotta get back now, Emma. Thanks for breakfast. Emma gave Primble one last hug, and Gabe hopped on Scout's back from the windowsill, backed the ponies up, and headed off, and Merlin took off after them. Emma threw on her sundress and screamed, Come get me! I'm a prisoner in here. Adele rushed in, taking Emma up in arms. Oh my gosh, you dressed yourself and quit being a drama queen. You can just sit on the veranda and be a little more patient. Emma pressed her lips firmly together and said nothing. She drummed her fingers on the wicker chair, impatiently waiting for Fry. She caught a flash of white coming down the path. Merlin landed, dropping the note he carried in her lap. Emma gave him a pat. Oh, it's from Grandpa. I guess you already knew that. She untied the ribbon that bound the rolled-up message. And before she read, she turned to Merlin. I love this special way of sharing secrets. Grandpa knows I can read and write backwards. Emma read the note and rolled it back up. Merlin, please take it to my room for me. Merlin grabbed the scroll and flew off over Fry's head. That's quite a hawk and another message from Grandpa, I see. 
What do you two write each other? Fry asked. It's our secret, she giggled, barely able to contain her excitement. And from her new view in Fry's arms, the garden seemed much larger from the higher level. She enjoyed seeing more of it as they traversed to the lily pond. Flo walked nimbly up the path to join them. I hope you like your present, Flo said, holding on to Fry's arm, excited herself. Once they got closer to the lily palm, Emma gasped. For me? She, sh she hugged Fry's neck as hard as she could and reached over to hug Flo. Not so hard, Flo laughed. There stood her present amid dragonflies and butterflies flitting through gossamer rays of sunlight. May we present your garden bed by the lily pond, Flo said, taking a sweeping bow. Fry had welded an ornate headboard on t into designs of sea life with the help of the blacksmith in town. An octopus ran the entire length along the top, and outstretched tentacles led to different sea creatures as seahorses and mermaids, fish, sea stars, and coral. Flo had embroidered the iron smooth linens with a the garden theme, and the unique bed stood close to the lily pond stone walls so that things could be set upon it. Fry laid Emma on the new cover and she ran her hand over the smooth embroidery. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, Flo, Fry, thank you so much. Fry stepped back. You're most welcome, birthday week girl. Flo took a seat on the wall. She studied her handiwork, proudly running her fingers across the neat stitches. I enjoyed making this for you. It is beyond awesome, Emma said, laying back. Fry grabbed the tray of lemonade jingling with ice cubes from Adele. She had a book tucked under her arm. Emma moved her upper body in a snow angel fashion. Mama, my early present! Adele sat down beside her. This is wonderful. Shall we read? Flo and Fry slipped away, knowing how magical it must be for Emma to have her special place by the lily pond. Now it was mother and daughter time. Snuggled together, a chapter was read by the soft light of the garden. This is enough for now. I have to get things ready. It isn't every day a ballad girl turns ten. In fact, it's been a few generations. A dragonfly landed on the edge of Emma's glass. I wish I had wings, Mama. Me too. What a beautiful dragonfly. It's red. You're going to be all right alone out here. Emma slowly crept her fingers towards her glass to touch the winged beauty, but it flew off. I'd much rather be out here than that old room that's not mine. She rolled from her side to her tummy, staring out over the pond. Lovely lily and lotus flowers floated faithfully alongside their green pads. A tiny frog hopped from one towards the wall and landed near her glass. Emma put her hand over her drink. Not in my lemonade! Startled, he jumped off her bed and into the garden. And then... She noticed something curious. Next, chapter 8, A Fairy.